Uh, looks like we've got a call from Mike. He, him, coming out of Washington, the state of Washington, way out west. Things that naturalists claim about the origins of life are irrational. Uh, you're on the air with uh, Seth Andrews and Johnny P. Angel. Things that naturalists claim about the origins of life are irrational. All right. Well, um, please explain. What are some of those things? Well, just for one, you know, do you know what amino acids are? Do I know what amino acids are? Yeah. I, I have an idea. Chains of chemicals. Oh, yeah. Okay. Anyway, there's there's 98. There's people that disagree a little bit on this, but there's 98 naturally occurring elements, right? I don't know. Are there? Yes. Okay. Six, and there are six. There's six of them account for 98 percent of what living things are made of. Okay. So, do you believe it's reasonable that? Of all the millions of combinations those 98 chemical elements can make, they assemble themselves with no reason, no rhyme or reason, into 300 possible. There are 300 identified different amino acids, only 20 particular ones, all left-handed. 16.8 billion of them are in uh, arranged a certain way in 42 million proteins in the simplest cell. Great. Mike, I, I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and, and, and just stop you right there, because what you're talking about right now, I think, is, is an interesting topic. I think that what you are talking about is what is this ir an irreducible complexity. I've got a magic marker over here. I'm going to go ahead and and do that for you. It sounds like it's an irreducible complexity argument. Could be also be argument from design. Well, now I've just negated the need for a magic marker. Um is it your suggestion that because I can't have an explanation for how this complicated natural phenomenon occurred, that it's irrational for me to not assert that it is therefore a god? Well, if we were playing poker and I was dealing and I dealt myself 10 royal flushes in one suit in a row, would you believe that I wasn't cheating? I'm going to tell you something. <clears throat> Um, Mike, talking about the origins of life and the abiogenesis is not a game of poker. I haven't laid down a huge stack of chips um, to I investing in something. I have information in front of me that complex nature of, of uh, the material world is presented in front of me, and, and you are presenting the idea that it is caused or, or the complexity is the is evidence of the existence of a supernatural being. And uh, and and my my thought for that is uh, I'm not convinced that that's the case. I don't know why the world is why these amino acids are so complex. I don't know how they came about, but to assert. um supernatural cause for it is a bridge too far for me. Uh, I can't, I can't go there with you. And um, I don't think that that means that I'm being irrational. I don't think it's irrational to say, yeah, I don't know. Seth, do you think it's irrational to say interesting, good point, but uh, I, I don't have an explanation for that. I just, if I can go back a few steps, I sure. disagree with the premise of Mike's question. Okay. We hear the argument from randomness. It's almost like the 747 in a junkyard oh, argument, yeah. which is a total misunderstanding of how complex life evolved. And, you know, there is some randomness, but there are other factors, genetic factors, environmental factors. Or that before genetic Pardon me, pardon uh, me, we're, we're, we're prebiotic. Ultimately, though, you're talking about design. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Well, before I answer further, what's your inclination on who or what is the designer? I'd be curious. 
close God of the Bible, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Okay. All right. Well, how does one make that leap? Because if a Muslim says that it was Allah, the Quranic Allah who did it, or perhaps it is a Hindu and one of the Hindu gods, or maybe some other deity, or maybe just some well, vague just say, cosmic just mother. Any, just, let's just say intelligence, and intelligence, the, the, random, the randomness upon... Uh, no, 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 uh, forgive uh, me. I, I want to I dial in, Mike. I, okay. you, you have invoked Yahweh Jesus, and I'd like to know how you got from you see design in all of this complexity to Yahweh Jesus. Yeah, walk us, walk us down the path. Well, well for, there's one scripture that says, I am uh, fearfully and wonderfully made. Oh, yes. But okay, if we, but if I found a similar uh, I mean, scripture just, uh, the, about the, the creation of humans in the Vedas or in the Quran, I could quote that back to you. So other than reading out of the Bible, which is a book written by men, how do you know that the creator designer is Yahweh or, and or Jesus? You're unmuted, Mike. Oh, I, I, Mike I lied. Way. I lied. I put Mike now you're way. unmuted, Mike. Oh, yeah, Mike. Okay. Mike, sorry. sorry about that. So, yeah. How did you how did you specifically to, to, to sort of summarize what Seth is saying is you, you concluded Yahweh and Jesus. Why not Muhammad? Why not Vishnu? Why not uh, Ahura Mazda? Well, why why should it be them? Why um, should it be Yahweh? And there's yeah. no intelligent. It can be okay. It can be any of any of those. But I'm saying at least some. You can pick whoever you want. But I'm saying there's intelligence, intelligence behind uh, life that it didn't occur. Okay. Well, if I can, form of a pond I don't want to. I don't want to take a. I don't want to step on Johnny because I, I no. know I'm. I'm just a humble guest on this show here. But again, I disagree with your premise that what we are looking at is absolutely random. Everything just accidentally came together, and now we have complex life in all of these many wondrous forms. I think that's a complete misunderstanding of life and how life works. Beyond that. I think the idea that we see intelligent design is an absolute falsehood because there were so many things. Dr. Abby Hafer is an evolutionary biologist who has a wonderful book about this. It's called The Not-So-Intelligent Designer. And it is a candid and very readable look at all of the things that are all around us that make no sense from a design point of view, you know? The, the the human eye, <laughs> from a design point, it makes no sense. Uh, if we look at vestigial organs and junk DNA, and we look at the fact that the windpipe and the esophagus are so close that people choke to death, hundreds of people choke to death, all that's give out. And, uh, you know, we can't regenerate limbs like other animals. And if you look at the planet, you see that 99% of all life has gone extinct and that most of the planet's water is unlivable and undrinkable and all of these other things that our sun gives us cancer, Mike. So, I mean, I design sounds good on paper. Can I say something about the sun? Can I say something about the sun? Sure. Yeah, sure. Why, why is the nebular theory of the solar system's formation, it's uh, backwards. The sun has 99% of the mass of the solar system and only has 2% of the angular momentum. That's totally ass backwards from the nebular theory, but from physics. Yeah, Mike, uh, <laughs> you know, I don't know the, what to, I don't know what to tell are... you. It sounds like you've, you've, you've figured this all out, and I'm not going to say go ahead and collect your Nobel Prize. I'm not going to suggest that you should walk into a university and 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 a, and just give a lecture and and claim your phd but it seems to me that um these are subjects that experts have been studying for their entire careers and seth i i don't want to speak for you but i don't think you have a uh, any 
real experience in in astrophysics. I know I don't, but I think um, from our perspective is you're asserting as an explanation for the origin or the, the first cause, whatever you want to call it, of this this phenomenon called life or the the solar system, an intelligent designer, an intelligence that perhaps exists without physical manifestation. Uh, in the universe that is outside of space and time that can, uh, with through some mechanisms, non-material mechanisms, perhaps through, I don't know, a kind of telekinesis, I'm not sure, can move matter and energy around in a way that, that sets it up so that 99.999 repeating percent of the universe is absolutely deadly to human life, but a small part of it uh, is at least has air for us to breathe and therefore can result in a circumstance where chemicals interact with each other so that sometime within a fixed margin of space time can result in a, in a, in an organism that can interact with its environment and think about its own existence. I don't know. There's a lot of assumptions in there. And I think the, the greatest assumption is that you, uh, can can establish that such a being that exists outside of space and time with telekinetic powers exists and i'm just not there i'm just not there the fact that the universe is complex not enough i'm content with an asterisk to say wow the universe sure is a marvelous place look at all those amino acids uh how'd they get here i don't know but i don't think it's um the Holy Spirit, or whatever. What's your response to that, Mike? But but a, but a, but a perfectly dead a dead chemicals can arrange themselves into a sixteen point eight billion amino acids. Yeah, only twenty of three hundred choices arranged in proteins averaging four hundred amino acids each. I'm growing a, a little like weary of this, Mike. But, yeah. but let me let me stop real fast because I want to be I want to honor well, the time of the viewers. Of it. It, makes, and, it makes it makes you look stupid. No, if I believed that some cosmic other created amino acids and arranged them in a specific way, how would that change the world that we live in? Because that God is still a watchmaker God, an involved deistic God that started the cosmos, right? Creates everything and starts the mechanism and then remains totally invisible and uninvolved in a personal way in anybody's life. And so that makes all of this talk about amino acids totally academic. It doesn't make any, even if that deistic cosmic other created the things you say it created, so what? It has no significance to our daily lives here. None whatsoever. Yeah, uh, and, and I'm and I'm with you, Seth. Uh, I, I'm going to go ahead and I, I let Mike go. Mike, we've got we've got uh, student Dr. Ben here in the background. He's not going to jump in and talk to you about it, but gee, uh, Ben sure knows uh, his his amino acids. Student Can I jump in real fast because yeah, this brought something to mind? We we're talking about I don't know the word yeah. cosmos came up. Do you sure. remember when uh, Ken Ham? over at Answers in Genesis, said that uh, aliens can't exist because there would have had to have been an Adam and Eve on another planet. Or wait, wait, no, aliens wait, aliens can't go to heaven. That's right, because okay. only souls exist on planet Earth. So yeah. if we, we were to find intelligent life elsewhere, they would all be damned and destined to go to hell. I don't even think that's related to the topic, but for yeah. some reason it popped into my tiny skull. And I had to bring it up. Sorry about that. Mike. No, not not at all. Not at all. I, I, that reminds me of a of a science fiction book I read where aliens did come to Earth, or we went to their planet, or something like that, or we communicated with them in some way. And the story was from the was written from the perspective of a Catholic priest who was having a crisis of faith to try to justify the you know the dogma of the catholic church with this new information that makes no mention of it and um i don't remember what the priest had to say about it but um yeah uh 
but Mike, did you I, uh, see oh, that cartoon where the aliens come to the earth and the first thing they see is like a six foot crucifix with a carved Jesus on it? Yeah. And he was like, hey, Al, what do you think? And he's like, I think we need to get the fuck out of here. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> it's true. I, I, Mike has called before. Mike has given us a litany of the amino acids. And um, I, I'll, I'll be honest, I, um, I'm not a big amino acids fan. I try to avoid them wherever I can. But student Dr. Ben is, is, our, is our host here. He's in the chat. I'm not going to let student Dr. Ben in to continue this conversation. But Mike, if you're still listening out there in your laboratory, go ahead and call back when student Dr. Ben is present. And I'm sure that you will go to school when Ben is here.